Hmm. Okay. So after the annual deleting loads of applications. Okay. What's up, guys? Freeman here. Welcome back to another video. So this is going to be like the third time I've recorded this over a period of time because time works in very, very mysterious ways. And despite my lack of absence, I fell into a wormhole and it's now still the same day that I should have recorded this. So it's currently no fab day five. Um, or I just relapsed and started all over again. One of the two. So um, I decided instead of like going to like day one, which is really boring, I'm so sick of doing day one, day two, day three. If I ever relapse, I just won't post. And then I'll keep doing it until I get back up to the days and then I'll post anyway. Because I plan to do other stuff as well. So there may be other videos in between as well. And uh, I keep saying that I've been toying with the idea of a video game channel and I will be doing it. I keep, I, it's one of those things that, do you know sometimes in life, um, let, me, let me turn this off and talk for a bit. Do you know, sometimes in life, um, especially when, when it comes to fears and things that you need to deal with, you will keep being reminded of them. And same thing with desires. You will keep being reminded of, the, of them until you act upon it. And I have an analogy for fear that I that I created that's, that's really, really helped. Is that fear, unresolved fear, is like trash in your house that you haven't taken out. And all the rooms in that house are your aspects of your life, like your, your certain relationships, your business, all sorts of other stuff. Now that trash, that may have been something as small as a couple of banana peels or, or like a fish carcass or something that you've picked clean. If you don't take it out, it'll eventually start to smell. And if you leave it for a long period of time, that smell will permeate every other room of your house till everything stinks. Everything stinks. And at first glance, you, you may not even know what's the cause of the smell. It can be something very, 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 very small. But that's where mental cleanliness and hygiene and dealing with fears comes into play. Because if you ignore it, this fear will metastasize into other aspects of your life and all of a sudden you'll be pathologically avoiding things that really aren't that much of a problem, but you're doing it because you have a fear of spiders. Or maybe you have a fear of being open and honest. Or maybe, and at the root of that fear comes from, there's someone who you wanted to get back in touch with that you didn't, and you know that you should have done it, and now it's just creating a big neurosis around the whole thing. It can be something very, very small. And I actually faced one of my greatest fears about a week and a half ago now, and uh, since then, it's actually one of the reasons why I realized, which just makes me think, wow, I, I thought it was like a few days since I posted another video. No, it's been a couple of weeks. Man, time get Time, man. If you're young, time is so short. It's so... Uh, I, every single day, I'm just reminded of that. But there are, there are ways to slow down your perception of time that involve meditation and... A simple thing is like focusing on what you want to do, but you find that if you have a million and one thoughts in your head, time just goes, and all of a sudden, like you know. But I face one of my one of my deepest fears, and it goes back into what I was saying before about fears that you haven't addressed basically end up coming back to bite you. And that was around the fact that when I was a lot younger, um, I was basically I thought at least at the time that my family had been turned against me. And I was really close with some of my extended uh, family members, and especially my cousins, who they were quite young, and I spent a lot of time going around there and, you know, helping them out. And there was a fox, and uh, and uh, they would always love to see me. Um, just a quick note: I was about to reach for the phone and show you the fox and be like, "Hey, look at this," but I realized that, and one of the difficulties with making these videos is just like security issues, because I realized that in 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 some of my videos I was having license plates, which. I'm too small for that to really care, and I'm not sponsored, so I don't think they'll care. But like street names, street names of relatives and sort of stuff like this. And it's like, I'm, I'm going to be a bit more careful with that. I'm going to make sure that if, if in this video you can see like anything, I'm actually just going to cut out as much of it as I can and probably change the angle so it's more facing me. But, you know, um, so I eventually faced that fear and I saw one of my older cousin, one of my younger cousin relatives who was about to go off to university to do a completely worthless sociology degree. Um... I'm going to finish on this point, the fear point, before I go off on a tangent on useless degrees. But he always looked up to me. And I was, throughout all my life, I was like, get back in touch with them, get back in touch with them, get back in touch with them. And you could tell he was a bit confused and uh, he was a bit lost, hence why he's taking sociology. Um, and 
it kind of ate me up that I realized that because I was so afraid of, of their judgment because I've been brainwashed by my narcissistic mother to think that my entire external external family thinks that I am useless, stupid, could, you know, good for nothing. And the shame of that kept me away from them because they, because they looked up to me. I, I was thinking to myself, I'm a monster, which I wasn't. Um, so I finally got in touch and I finally tried to, 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 to set up a, a quick pub meeting. But I couldn't because he was last day before he was going off to university. So he was seeing all of his friends and, you know, the usual parties, dinners with people that you probably won't see again for a long, long, long period of time. Um, if ever with this whole lockdown stuff. Um, so it didn't go through, but I actually faced it. And I tell you, leading up to me facing it, I was doing everything I could to sabotage myself. And I know that if I'd faced that fear earlier, I would not have such big problems with being intimate with people and with letting people into my life. If not for that fear, I would not have a problem. Fuel is almost empty. Okay, fill it up later. Um, I, I would not have so much of a problem. And what happens is that this fear will metastasize. So eventually it, it became all my extended family. I, I, I didn't want to see any of them because I didn't face this original fear. And I tell you, after I faced it, when you take out that trash, all of a sudden the room stops smelling. Now the room still, the house, my, my proverbial house here still kind of smells because there's still other things that I need to deal with. But it's noticeable when the smell is gone. Sort of like, you know, when you're cleaning your room. Sometimes your room gets a smell, even though it's clean. And you have no idea why until you really start rooting around. And you find, like, some banana peel or something that's just fell down the back of your dresser drawer. And, um, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it just felt... It, I, I wish I could have a time machine and just go back and tell myself, like, look, dude, like, this is what you need to do. <laughs> like, it's not an issue. Just deal with it. Just go straight ahead and just deal with it. I also hope that I'm recording with the audio, because before it had no audio, and I could not figure out for the life of me why. I hope this one does otherwise. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, it's just been a, a journey of really, under, un, and it also allows you to basically look at all the other areas in your life and think to yourself, where is it, what else that I'm avoiding? Because I had one of those moments where, you know, they said that there's a difference between knowledge and wisdom, and that is absolutely true is that there is a massive difference between what you know and what you know and what you live. And one of the things that turned into wisdom for me is that there's nothing to fear but, but fear itself. You've heard that said again and again and again, but truly, when, when I did that, when, when I faced it, yeah, I, was, I realized that I'm, the only thing I'm dealing with is fear. Because I could have done this years ago. I could have done this years ago. And it may seem like a small thing, but because I left it off, um, you know, it's almost like the brain says, well, if, if you, if you don't want to face this thing, then how the hell can you face all of these other things? You know what I mean? You can't face this little tiny thing over here. What? And, and you want to take on this big thing? No, you got to, you got to deal with that stuff first. But uh, anyway, so he's off to go and do a sociology degree. And I, it makes, reminds me of how lucky I am that I did not go to university. Cause if I had actually gone to university, what would have happened is that I would have picked a course that I didn't actually want to do, and I would have spent the whole time basically going around and around in circles trying to pay off that debt. And even my sister, who's like two years older than me, she still got student debt to pay off. And she's like, she's in her, you know, the one older older is in her 30s. Like, I've got two older sisters. But she's still paying off her student debt, and she did, did that, what, like, two, like, ten years ago? And I'm thinking, if I had gone to university, I would have wasted my time and what I've realized now is that entrepreneurship is really the future because university really gets you into a certain tax bracket. It gets you into the tax bracket where maybe you can have a good house like some of the houses around me. Maybe you can have a million pound house. Maybe you have a successful biggest, a successful business. But most of the time, you're only ever going to be earning about six or seven figures, which is a lot for a lot of people. It's a lot for a lot of people. But the thing is, is that the super, super, super rich and super, super, super successful people took the time to understand and grow their own entre entrepreneurial ventures. And obviously there are others who got quote unquote lucky, which I don't like calling it lucky because, you know, right place at the right time. Um, then, then there are those people who basically, um, Bill Gates, who I do not like one bit 
right now because of some of the stuff that he's doing. And I'm not going to get down, down that topic because YouTube will ban me. But Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, those people, none of them had any courses, none of them had any degrees, none of them spent time to think, n none of them spent five years in some sort of social justice major or something like that. University is a fast track to be able to get you a steady job in someone else's employment. And maybe if you work for another 20, 30 years, you'll be able to start up your own business, but, but, but then by the time you've actually got to that age, you, by the time you're earning the most amount of money, there really isn't that much time left to spend it, unless you're very much into natural health, and I will be living to 120, I know this. Um, but it's like you're about 40, 50, 60, oh great, you're earning seven figures now, but you spent all that time working for someone else, and what are you gonna do with all this money? You're gonna go on loads of cruises, and it may sound nice, but entrepreneurship, I believe right now, especially with the whole lockdown stuff, is the fastest way to be able to live the life that you want to live. The life that you want to live. Because I know that when I actually get out of my own way, the idea of being able to work wherever I want to work and to be able to enjoy myself while doing it is simple. I, I'm, I'm sorry, it's simple. It's one of those things that I just know. And there are very few things, oh, is it school time? Oh, it's closed again. Okay. There are very few things that I just know. But when I know things, I know things. You know what I mean? It's like these like these like predictions that, 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 that you have. Most about mostly about myself, whereas I know exactly what position I'm going to be in if I follow a certain course of action with enough conviction, it will happen. Then there's some other manifestation law of attraction sort of stuff to go with that as well, but I'm looking for you. But still, it's like univ and he's going off to do a freaking sociology degree. This is I remember when I was in, when I was in secondary school, just after I passed my A levels, like only like a few weeks before you actually had to pass your A levels, what did you have to do? You had to go back into school, you, they would set you up with, with, with a computer, you would pick a university course, and then you'd say, all right, these are the universities. It was, tri it was UCAS, I think it was called. Um, and, you know, so you would have to pick some universities, and you had, the thing is, is that you hadn't even freaking, you just turned 18, you've just turned 18, 19, and you have to make these big decisions about what, what, you, want to do with, what you want to do with your life. I remember, who was it, Noam Chomsky, that said that university is basically a scam to get people into debt. It's, it's a machine to turn people from a very young age into the debt-based economy. It wants to turn you into serfs, and it's like, I think it was who, um, Aaron Clary, I was watching some of his, some of his videos, um, Arsehole Consulting, pretty funny guy. Um, and uh, and, uh, and uh, he's, he was saying that if, if there ever was a tinfoil hat conspiracy, um, it would be the fact that universities and big business um, and the government have this have this revolving door because they know that if they can get as many people hooked up on debt, then they're going to create an army of workers who will do anything to help pay off the student debt. And if you're a man, if you're a woman, it's a bit different because you can always, and this is what a lot of women do after they come out of college and they realize that they can't get a job, is they go for a rich guy. It, it, it isn't all just about, oh, you know, because I want nice cars and I want, I want, I want this, that, and the other, and I want a big house to live in. It's because, holy crap, I have so much student debt, I have nowhere to pay it off, and no one is going to give me a job. Now, you could also look to entrepreneurship. This is where entrepreneurship comes in because someone with enough creativity and intelligence has the ability to turn any degree into an actual you know profit but it's difficult especially if you come up with degrees like david beckham studies which yes that is an actual university degree look it up there's crazy stuff like hamburger studies which are sponsored by mcdonald's i'm not kidding um <laughs> hamburger studies and you better got ten thousand. to oh, it's crazy but um he's just gonna have to learn and part of me thinks to myself that if i'd got to him sooner then maybe he wouldn't have made that stupid decision but this but but at the same time i do realize and this is like looking at life in a retrospective, you can look back at past experiences and think to yourself, oh, well, if only I sorted myself out then, then I would be here, 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 here. Especially when it comes to other people. Oh, well, if only I wasn't such an arsehole, if only I developed myself, maybe I could have got with this person. Or maybe I, I wouldn't have mouthed off to that boss in my dream job interview. But the thing is, is that especially when it comes to interpersonal relationships, I know firsthand the damage that you can do, how many bridges you can burn if you're not in the right place and you try and reconnect with people and you try and forge new relationships, not just with people but also with jobs as well, is that you're ready when you're ready. And if you're not ready, most of the time there is, you know, you are ready. And I often joke that I've only, I haven't wasted much in my 20s, I mean, I'm not 30 yet, yet, um, but it's like you, like I haven't, 
wasted that many years of my life. I'd probably say I've wasted about three. And I'm not including school, because school was a total waste of time. Total waste of time. But it was. it's only when you come into enough knowledge and enough power to make your own decisions that you have the ability to say, okay, now I'm wasting my time. If you're in school, or if you're confused, or if there's something that you really, really, really need to sort out emotionally, physically, financially, and you're struggling to get to a place to be able to do it, that's not a waste of time. But if you have the opportunity, you have the money, you have the time, you have the ideas, you have the help, you have the support network, and you don't do anything, then you're wasting your time. And I probably did that for about three years of my 20s, you know. But anyway, that's all I'm going to say for today, guys. No Fab Day 5. As you've noticed, I'm really not talking that much about No Fab because I've, I have hundreds of videos. What the hell am I going to say? You know, really, like, unless someone has ideas, if anyone has any questions about NoFab, hit me up with it, but I'm just going to talk about whatever the hell comes to mind. Peace!